Cook Love Eat with Sarah, a vegetarian cooking show. Title sponsor Mustafa Center Singapore. Co sponsor Kebabs and Curries, Rooftop Mustafa Center. And Handi Restaurant, Midnight Dining at its best. Supported by Everest Masale, just a rose bunny tasty tasty khani. Hi Anu. Hi Auntie. Welcome again to Cook Love Eat. Thank you. It's nice to be here again. And this time it's something very different. What are we doing today? Today we are going to do some oil-free recipes. Oil-free recipes? All three recipes we are doing today are Indonesian. Okay. The first one we are doing is Sayur Asam. Sayur Asam? Yeah. Sounds like rasam. It is uh, sweet and sour. I see. So yeah. you are right. So it's an Indonesian rasam. That it is done. an Indonesian rasam. And this soup actually is not made into oil-free uh, recipe. It is originally oil-free. So back in Indonesia, they make it in an oil-free manner yeah. and cook it in water. Oh, yeah. This recipe actually originates from the Sundanese people in uh, West Java. Yeah, okay. Something very authentic and traditional very that we're going to try yeah. today. And healthy at the same time. Very healthy. Oil-free cooking is very good for skin. Mm. I think uh, our viewers out there will really enjoy learning about this and the other few dishes that come along right after the soup. Sure. Okay, for this we've got corn, corn on the cob. We've got some peanuts. We've got uh, salam leaves. Now these are very typical Indonesian. We've used those before. Before we have got leaves. no substitute for these, as I said. This is chayote, this vegetable. Chayote. Yeah, pumpkin squash family. Okay. But it looks like a big pear. It does look like a guava or a pear. Pear. Yeah. It's uh, very rich in vitamin C, and it's very good for heart problems. I see. Mm. And then we've got long beans, we've got bean sprouts, cabbage. Okay, we've got shallots, chilies, and candle nuts. Candle nuts, I These see. These three are blended here. I've already blended them into a paste. And that's the paste. That's the paste. We've got galanga. Galango. Which is very detoxifying. And then we've got some palm sugar and some tamarind pulp. Palm sugar. So we're using a totally different kind of sugar today. Yeah, which is a healthier sugar. And we can learn how to use palm sugar, I'm sure, in other recipes as well True. when you're doing uh, vegetarian oil-free cooking. Okay. Now for this, we start boiling water. We've got about five to six cups of water here. And we're going to boil our corn. Okay. Just cut into these big chunks. We throw in some whole peanuts. Peanuts are with the skin. Okay. And they're Shell not brown. peanuts, yeah, yeah, they're not brown. So the peanuts gives it a flavor? Is that what we're trying yeah. to achieve with the peanuts? Yeah. Okay. They're not fried, they're not roasted, they're not ground. They're just going to be boiled. Raw peanuts Raw that we're peanuts. boiling. Yeah. Along with this goes in galanga, then some salam leaves. salam leaves. After these salam leaves, I'm going to put in this blended mixture what I've got. The paste that we've made. The paste with this is fresh red chili, shallots and candle nuts. You know, candle nuts are used a lot in Indonesian cooking. Sure. They're like macadamia nuts actually. Very waxy and uh, you've tried before, right? Yes, and very high in nutrients as well. well Good for the heart as heart, well. Yeah. So we're going to put this paste in. So as the water is boiling, the uh, paste has been put in. Yeah. Then we put in our palm sugar and some salt. Now we let this simmer for a little while. Now this is a water-based soup, as you mentioned. Yes, this is a soup. So there's absolutely no oil that goes into this soup. And that's the original recipe. And that's also the beauty of it, I guess, because yeah. it makes it easier for you to not think, how am I going to achieve making this soup without any oil? There's nothing much you need to do extra because you're not cutting down the oil. It is, it is oil the original. Completely. Yeah. yeah. So this concept of oil-free cooking has really taken a turn now, even in a place like Singapore. Mm -hmm. You know, Singaporeans come across so healthy and so health conscious, but if you really look at the statistics, 33% of Singaporeans are suffering 
from cardiac ailments and blood pressure and other cardiovascular related um, ailments as well. Mm -hmm. So I think this is one of those perfect soups yeah. that one can enjoy while being preventive to any of these ailments and also recovering from them. Yeah. Actually, oil-free food is not just for sick people. It's people for who believe in prevention is better than cure. Sure. And you have to be careful of what you eat these days. Yeah. I mean, even the younger generation needs to be careful and prepared True. for the days to come tomorrow. Yeah. It's very surprising. You see such youngsters having heart problems today. Yes. A lot of it is genetics, lifestyle, what you're putting into your system. Yeah. And, um, you know, every item that you see today has got a different history and a cause for your own well-being. True. It's what you eat. So as we were saying, it's very important to see what you put in your system. And you know, as Benjamin Franklin said, you eat to live and not live to eat. Yes, so it's yeah. very, very important to see what you put in. So there are a lot of people who do different variations in their personal lifestyle as to what they put in. There are a lot of people who fast once a week to balance it yeah. out during the rest of the week, especially if you tend to eat out a lot during the weekends. Yeah. Do you practice any of this at uh, your home, the oil-free cooking or um, um, any of those techniques, so to speak, for a healthier lifestyle. I know you're already vegetarian, which is very promising, but um, any of these uh, ideas that you have? I must say I used to fast a lot earlier, okay. which I don't do anymore. But yeah, I try to stick to oil-free cooking at least once a week. Once a week. Yeah. It's great to balance it off as well. Yeah. Now I think our corn looks a little bit done. So we'll put in some long beans. These are... Yeah. Bean sprouts, chayote, and cabbage. Cabbage. So okay. all of these things are full of nutrients. Yeah. And uh, I suppose very good for the skin as well because all you're really getting is all the nutritional value of all of the different vegetables yeah. from different families and uh, minus the oil, making it a pretty wholesome soup. And we're not going to cook it too long. We're just going to cook it enough for the vegetables to be just crisp and tender. And then you retain the nutrients you retain, then. Yeah. Yeah. I guess what happens a lot with Indian cooking is we tend to overcook cook. everything and we lose the value of the, yeah. uh, of the food and the nutrients. Yeah. Vegetables look pretty done. Just nice, not mm. overdone. And it smells good too, it's full yeah. of colorful vegetables and all the goodness in one big bowl. I'm going to add some tamarind pulp. Tamarind pulp. And this tamarind pulp is homemade or it's something you... Uh... No, it's homemade. You soak tamarind in a little bit of water mm -hmm. and you squeeze out the pulp. Okay. Gives it a little zesty taste to the whole yeah. soup. So this soup has palm sugar and tamarind. So that sweet and sour flavor gives it a very refreshing taste. Right. And makes it less monotonous as well. Yeah. Something a little bit more different for you to taste. Thanks. Here we go. Our soup is done. Well, it looks really good. Mm. And I guess the nuts make it nice and crunchy, crunchy, giving it a very nice self flavor. So this can be eaten with steamed rice or on its own because yeah. it's quite a wholesome soup yeah. as well. Yeah. Great. Either way. And what's the name of the soup again? This is called Sayur Asam. Sayur Asam. Yeah. Not it's Sayur Asam. Not Sayur Asam. Sayur Asam. Sayur Asam. Actually, Indonesians love to eat this with something grilled. Grilled, okay. They normally have it with grilled fish or some kind of a grilled dish on the side. So are we going to be doing anything grilled next? Yeah. We're doing a tofu. Grilled fish. tofu? Yeah. Great. Sayur Asam. 200 grams long beans. 125 grams bean sprouts, 200 grams chayote peeled and chopped, 100 grams cabbage, 1 ear corn, quarter cup peanuts, 2 inches galangal, 50 grams palm sugar, 1 and a half tablespoons tamarind pulp, 2 to 3 salam leaves, to be blended into paste, 2 fresh red chilies, 5 shallots, 5 candle nuts, Boil six to seven cups of water, add corn and peanuts, simmer for about five minutes, and add galangal, salam leaves, blended chili paste, palm sugar, and salt. Cook for about 10 to 15 minutes, and add the long beans and bottle guard. Lastly, add tamarind pulp, bean sprouts, and cabbage. 
Cook for a couple of minutes till cabbage is almost cooked. Serve hot with steamed rice. And curries, vegetarian and non vegetarian cuisine. Rooftop Mustafa Center. Ingredients are here for tofu peppers, our next dish. Tofu peppers? Yes. Sounds very peppy. Peppers, you know what the meaning of peppers? I don't. Peppers is an Indonesian way of cooking. It's a cooking method okay. in which you use banana leaves to wrap whatever you're making, whether you're making fish. Actually, fish is more popular. So we're using tofu instead of fish. You wrap the tofu in banana leaves, okay. steam it, and then grill it. Steam it and then grill it. Yeah, steaming so and grilling wrapped in banana leaf is called peppers. So it's two stages of preparation then, the steaming yeah. and then the grilling. Yeah. Peppers, sounds very peppy. Peppy, yes. I'm pepped, let's do this. <laughs> so for this we've got some firm tofu. Firm tofu. And what we've done, you've got fresh red chilies, we've got fresh turmeric, mm. garlic, again candle nuts, sugar and salt, which we have blended into a paste. That paste. All these ingredients together. For this Thai basil leaves we are using instead of Indonesian herbs which are difficult to get everywhere. Hmm. So we are replacing it with some Thai basil leaves. Thai basil leaves. Yeah. We've got some leaves there and some chopped up. Chopped basil leaves. Yeah. So in this paste which is blended, I'm going to add these chopped leaves, hmm. sugar, a bit of teeny mini bit of sugar, some salt. And we'll mix that up. Mix this up. If I can just help you with that. And you know what I love about coming on this show? Everything is in front of you and all you have to really do is mix it all up, cook it and then you get to eat it as well. That's the best part. That's where people feel recipes are so simple. Actually it's all prepared and kept ready. Well, I think, you know, as time goes by and I, and I keep um, revisiting the show, I feel that um, I am able to cook quite a few of the recipes. Mm. And uh, as long as somebody else cleans up after. <laughs> and keeps all your ingredients ready. Oh, that I can do now. It's the cleaning up that's a little bit more painful. <laughs> okay, now you've got your paste ready. We've got these banana leaves here. Wow. What you need to do is soften these banana leaves either by putting in microwave for a couple of minutes. Okay. Or traditionally in Indonesia, they soften them on fire. On fire? Yeah, on coal. So it's they, like secoing it. Secoing directly mm. on coal, yes. So we'll put some basil leaves. And I know this is looking complicated, but I, I'm, I'm guessing it's not. No, it's not. Mm. Then we've got some spring onions. Spring onions. Okay. We've got some lemongrass, lemon grass. which is bruised. So okay. lemongrass, of course, is very good for uh, different ailments as well. Sinusitis and, you know, all of that good stuff. Oh, got... most importantly, it's excellent for detoxification. So great for a hangover. Excellent, <laughs> yeah. So this tofu, I'm going to slit it into half. Okay. Smear this paste. Mm. Onto the tofu. Onto the tofu. I put the paste side down. Okay. I put some more paste here. On top of it, to On layer it. it. Yeah. And then I put another piece of tofu on it. Put some more. On top. On top. Here we go. Mm. It's looking like a nice chutney on top of the tofu. Yeah, yeah, it is. Indonesian chutney. What you could do is give slight cuts. Hmm. Just so it soaks in and yeah, really yeah. Um, takes in the chutney, so to speak. Yeah. 
Africa. Okay, here we've got our water steaming. We we'll put in our tofu. And just keep it on the simmer to simmer in. We steam it for a good 10-15 minutes. Hmm. After 10-15 minutes, we'll take it off and we'll put it on the grill. Griller. Like okay. I said, traditionally it's done on coal, hmm. but now we're going to do it on a gas stop grill. Unless we had a tandoor over here, then we could do it on coal. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I know this is, I think, steamed for a good 15-20 minutes. Now I'm going to put it on this gas stop grill. Okay. And you don't need to glaze the grill with anything because no. it's completely no. oil free. Actually, the banana leaf serves as an organic wrapper. Oh, okay. It's not edible. Hmm. Banana leaves are not edible. But it keeps everything inside soft yeah. and nice and uh, yeah. composed. Yeah. And of course, the flavor. Hmm. So we'll grill it on this and it's ready to eat. Wow. Yeah. Now you can see, Anu, hmm. it's nicely grilled. Is it hot? Of course it is hot. I'll just try touching it. Yeah, try. So it's like nicely barbecued yeah. on the grill. Mm -hmm. And totally no oil, totally no butter, no margarine, nothing to glaze it. Nothing. So when do we get to try it? Again, I have not made this into an oil-free dish hmm. recipe. It is originally like this. Okay. So I guess Indonesian food can be quite healthy if you think about it. Yeah. That's the misconception, I guess, that mm -hmm. most of the Southeast Asian food is in mm. fact, unhealthy. Yeah. But this is so healthy. Yeah. This yeah. is the way they eat. They eat this uh, grilled tofu. Yeah. And of course, tofu is uh, an alternative for grilled fish, fish. That's right. in uh, Indonesia. Mm. But tofu is also very good because it's high in, of course, protein and uh, calcium. That's true. After this, the dish we are going to do is nasi goreng. Nasi goreng? You can't make that without oil. Now, that is not originally an oil of free course. dish. Of course. Everywhere I've it. seen nasi goreng cooked, there's tons of oil put into it. Because nasi is rice and goreng is fried. Fried rice. You, yeah, so you can't fry without oil, but we are going to do without oil So today. what are you going to, what's the secret? You're going to fry it in water? Yeah, we're going to do it now. Well, let's see, we'll see. <laughs> Pepe's tofu, two cakes, 500 grams, firm tofu, make slits horizontally, three stalks, spring onions, cut into two centimeter lengths, three cups, Thai basil leaves, three stalks, lemongrass, cut into three, banana leaves, to be pounded into a paste, four shallots, four fresh red chilies, two hot chilies, 10 candle nuts, one inch, fresh turmeric, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon sugar, one cup basil leaves chopped fine. Mix the chopped basil leaves into the blended paste. Microwave the banana leaves to soften them a little. Place spring onions and basil leaves on the banana leaf. Smear paste on both sides of tofu and place on the leaves. Top with another piece of tofu which has paste smeared on it. Top with basil leaves and spring onions. Wrap the tofu with banana leaf and secure with toothpicks. Steam tofu for about 30 minutes. Before serving, grill the tofu for about 5 minutes and serve hot. have next oil free nasi goreng oil free nasi goreng but goreng is fried but we're gonna fry it in water or something else we're just going to dry roast it okay we've got some shallots and garlic blended there blended garlic we've got some chilies which are blended okay we've got some indonesian sweet sauce indonesian sweet sauce yeah that's something unique we haven't seen before no ketchup manis is very popular ketchup manis mm. okay then some vegetables, cabbage, spring onions, French beans, peppers, carrots. Different peppers, yeah. all very colorful and the goodness of all the vegetables here. And some cooked rice. Cooked rice. Usually nasi goreng is made for breakfast with leftover rice. In Indonesia? In Indonesia. So what you had from the dinner the night before yeah. is re-renovated into nasi goreng nasi the next goreng. morning. Okay. And you never make nasi goreng with steaming hot rice. You take it out, let it cool down. Kept rice. Kept rice, yeah. 
So what we are going to do is dry roast our onions and garlic. Mm -hmm. Everything that's been prepared today is steaming. Yeah. Yep. Steaming, hot, grilled, perfect for the weather that we're at. Look at it, how beautiful it is. It goes well with the weather, steaming hot the rice. The hot soup, the hot rice, yeah. the grilled tofu. Mm -hmm. Just can't wait to try all the food later. Okay, see, onions and garlic is roasted. Okay. Chilies, please. Chilies? Yeah, just throw in some of the chilies. We add in the vegetables one by one. So peppers. The green peppers. Red peppers. Yes. Yeah. Carrots. carrots. So why are we doing the oil-free episode today? Is it because everyone's put on all that Christmas and New Year holiday weight that they need to lose or something uh, else? Today we have a very special guest who will be joining with us. Here, today? Yeah, yeah, now, just now. That's Mayura Mota. Mayura Mota. Yeah, she's a nutritionist and has done an oil-free book. Right, I heard about that. Yeah. And, and I think she just uh, got a really good overwhelming response for her book recently. The excellent response. It's one of the best sellers today. Hmm. So we thought in honor of Mayura coming on the show, it was a good idea to make it oil free. Hmm. And uh, I guess a lot of viewers would benefit from it too. And it's a great idea, I think, in the long run as well. Yeah. Is Mayura Motha going to be trying all the dishes today that we have created? Yeah, I'm sure we'll make her try. So at least she tells us what she feels. No, she's done. A, she's put a book together. Maybe she'll put it on Indonesian cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add in a little bit of water to cook the vegetables. Okay, so dash of this is hot water, warm yeah. water. Yeah. In between your cooking, you always add hot water. Hot water. Yeah. Don't bring the temperature down with cold water. Keep it consistent. Yeah. Okay. Put in our rice. Salt and sweet salt. So now Mayura is a Singapore-based uh, nutritionist, is that right? That's right, yeah. And she's written this book that you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. I believe she also runs a social enterprise called um, Health Friend. That's correct, yeah. That's doing very well in yeah. Singapore. And she's helped a lot of people in Singapore and also in the region. Yeah. And I believe everything that she does is very personalized and customized yeah. to the person's needs. So. You can add in some spring onions, sure. half of it. Half of it. Or you can add fully, yeah. It'll look nice. Here we go. We have our nasi goreng, which is ready. Yeah. It looks nice and rich. It yeah. doesn't look like we didn't put any oil in it. Yeah. And uh, it certainly looks very, very tasty. Well, I can't wait to welcome uh, <laughs> Mayura to the show and have her try all the dishes that we cooked today. Let's get all our three dishes together and ask her to join us. And we can sit and have a chat with her as well about her book. Great. Nasi goreng. Three cups cooked rice. 50 grams French beans sliced diagonally. 50 grams carrots cut into strips. One green capsicum diced. One red capsicum diced. 100 grams cabbage shredded. Two stalks spring onions. Four fresh red chilies. Three bird's eye chilies or hot chilies. Six shallots chopped. Three cloves garlic chopped. One tablespoon Indonesian sweet sauce. Blend both the chilies into a paste. In a nonstick pan, dry roast chopped garlic and shallots. Add the blended chilies and all the vegetables. Add one to one and a half cups of water and cook till the vegetables are done and all the moisture is evaporated. Add Indonesian sweet sauce, salt and the rice. Lastly, add chopped spring onions and mix thoroughly. Serve. Hi Maria, welcome to Cook, Love, Eat. We are very happy to have you here. So today, uh, Auntie Sarah has prepared this oil-free Indonesian delicacies for us to try later on. And you've recently authored a book, Heart Smart Oil-Free Cookbook. And um, don't you feel a little bit of oil is actually required for the system? I, I think that would be something that we would be interested to know. Yeah, no, what uh, the book has been written, this particular book has been written as per the guidelines of Dr. Cordwell Esselton, who says that no oil. But he says no oil for people who have repeated uh, experience of a heart attack, failure of the angioplasty, failure of a bypass. But for regular people, the diet need not be so strict. Uh, when I say no oil, it means no additional oil. There's always a bit of fat in our food, whether it's tofu, whether it's rice, there's a bit of natural oils in every food. 
So he feels that that much is sufficient for heart patients who've had severe coronary artery disease because you just want to eliminate the plaques, reduce the plaques. Right. But for normal people, a bit of oil is fine, especially mm -hmm. olive oil and uh, natural extra virgin olive oil. Healthier options. Yeah, to healthier the type options. Of, yeah, to the types you've heard of, of omega threes, omega sixes. They are the right fats mm -hmm. in the right quantity. Mm -hmm. So if you have it in the right quantity, it's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what is the right quantity? <laughs> <laughs> the right quantity, I would say, according to uh, most dietary guidelines, whether it's Singapore or the US, would be 15 to 20 percent of your diet. But for heart patients, it should be about 10 percent to 12 percent of your dietary intake. Dietary intake yeah. daily? Daily dietary intake. I see. Okay, so normally 15 to 20 percent is what an average person has. Mm -hmm. But if you are obese, if you have a family history of cardiovascular disease, if you want to just lose weight, Sure. You can cut it down to 10 to 12 percent. Much healthier option. Much to look healthier option. To. Yeah. And the way you cut it down is to eliminate oil because there is fat in every food. None of these meals are fat-free. They're just oil-free. So, Sarab, these look amazing. These dishes. But can you tell me what kind of techniques you've used in making these dishes without oil? For nasi goreng, which is a very oily dish, actually, what we've done is I've uh, roasted onions and uh, garlic instead of frying and added some blended chilies and roasted them along. So it was more of dry roasting. Then we added us a little bit of Indonesian sauce. Wow. Some so water. That kind of created the natural flavor. Moisture. Yeah, yeah, then the moisture, yeah. 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 Basically, when um, you don't want to fry onions or garlic, it's nice to blend them. So when you blend them, there's a lot of moisture in it. And with that moisture, you can roast them. Okay, so that makes yeah, it easier. Yeah. Even in, when we do oil-free Indian cooking, if you puree your tomatoes, then they help. They okay, give so some body. Okay, so that's a great red. That's a great tip. That mm -hmm. if you want to make oil-free meals, it's best to puree of things and then yeah. cook it after puring. So you get natural oil, natural moisture, moisture, natural water release from the vegetable itself. Yeah. And what about this tofu dish? That looks amazing. Now that was steaming and grilling. Okay. And uh, of course, wrapping in banana leaf and basil le leaves. Yeah. So that kind of retains the moisture, moisture. In when you wrap it in. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So and soup, of course, has got yeah. more. That, that looks very nourishing, yeah. of course. It's got tons of veggies. <laughs> <laughs>